Hey guys, it's Brendo ST. Today I'm going to do a quick little uh, review, more of a how to use uh, the iOptron Smart EQ Pro. This is the 3200 model. Uh, I just got this at the beginning of the year here. Um, it's now the 7th of January, so I got it like literally a little over a week ago. Um, and I just started this hobby of astrophotography pretty much in September of uh, the last year. I'm using a Nikon D3400 with basically kit lenses that I'm borrowing from a friend until I can buy my own camera. But you, you're limited on a stationary tripod to how far you can do uh, with your, your tracking and all that stuff. Um, I had to do fairly large uh, ISO or fairly high ISO and then uh, very short exposures, especially with the 300 millimeter lens on here. So... You need one of these things, a sky or a star tracker. Um, this thing will literally go to an object that I point to and track it in the night sky, allowing much longer exposures. Um, and I'll do a before and after picture at the end of this video to show you uh, what a stationary tripod, like my first shots, as opposed to the first shots I took with this. Um, so <clears throat> this thing has to be polar aligned on uh, Polaris. Um, in the northern hemisphere, and I'm not sure what in the southern hemisphere, because I don't live there. So, sorry, I don't have that information. But, up here in the north, because I live in Buffalo, New York, we have the line at 2 Polaris, which is f f pretty much in the direction that's pointed right now. And it should be at the elevation that it's pointed at right now, compared to where I am. So, not too bad. Um, in the back of this thing is a polar scope. This unscrews. And then there's a little thing on front here that comes out little plastic thing and that opens the polar scope for this particular model to align you have to drop the counterweight bar um, usually there's a weight on here but because I'm just using a camera and not a telescope I don't need the counterweight on here or the bar up to make it perfectly level otherwise most people would have one when it's on you turn this thing on make sure it's in zero position which Basically, all these little lines in the back here line up. And then you should be able to see, through the scope, there's a little dial in there. Um, that is what you would use to align to Polaris. I use an app called the uh, Polar Finder, and it will uh, give you GPS, based on your GPS or your phone or whatever you're using, it'll give you where you need to align Polaris inside that scope. And aligning's pretty easy once I found out that you can focus this thing. The instructions don't say anything about that. So when I tried to do this the first time, <clears throat> this was all the way in, and it was so out of focus, so blurry, I couldn't even see through the thing. I couldn't see the, the reticle inside. And I thought something was wrong with it, like trying to align to Polaris. And those first shots I'll show you were with this pretty much not perfectly aligned because I couldn't see inside the scope. Um, and they still came out pretty good for my first try. I haven't been able to get out there again to try it now that I can see inside the scope just because clouds and it's winter, so it's cold. But um, basically this adjusts your level. You want to make sure this is a little loose so the, uh, the whole thing can move. And basically to fine-tune your adjustments is like that so you'll be lining in your inside the uh, polar scope and then if you want to adjust your <clears throat> the base rotation um, these there's two little knobs there that will align the side to side and that basically allows you to get Polaris in in line now I'm not sure if this has to be done every time you start this thing up um, but when I go in here, right now it says zero position, so I think it's actually right. Like, um, I for the most part, every time I've turned this on, I've went into the zero position once I had this locked on zero. And I set zero position again, because I don't actually know if you have to or not, but I do it just to be safe, I guess. Um, before you even use this thing, though, you have to go in here and go to settings and set time and sight. You have to set your whole GPS information in 
um, which I found online. You can get it on Google Maps. If you're using your phone, it'll tell you your GPS location, or you can use a website that uses uh, GPS thing. Unless you know the information, period, you can just punch that info in. Once you get that information in there, um, this should be set up to use. Now, the way I I don't know exactly for sure because I'm this, I'm brand new to this. But once I have my zero possession set on this thing, uh, I go to sync to target. Um, once my I'm polar aligned, and I would pick a an object, basically, in the sky. Say it could be a star that I know of, or um, like the moon, or something. So I would align it to say the moon. Obviously, you can't see anything, but when you do this, it'll start moving, and it's supposed to line up. It's it's loud. But it's going to line up to where the moon is. Not always. And that's what we'll do a quick little thing here for. Normally I have that in, but right now it's fine. So once that's moved and you look through your um, camera, if it doesn't show the moon directly in the center, you can hit these arrows, typically, and it'll move it. Something stuck here. So, <clears throat> if you're not lined up, you can hit the arrows and it'll move it um, to get it directly centered, and then you hit enter again. And once you're synced to an actual target, this thing will should track. Well, it wasn't set up right. Um, what happened there? Something. Alright, try that again. So you kind of like locked up for a second. That hasn't happened before. So, same moon. Solution to the moon. Alright, that, that's the screen you want. So when it shows that, if you're not directly centered in the moon in your camera, you can use the arrows here. And it'll move the motor until you can directly align it to the center. Then you hit enter. Once you know that's done, you are technically aligned and ready to go. So then you can go select and slew to an object. Um, say I wanted to do uh, M31, which is Andromeda. Which you can do that. It'll move once again. And it should point that way, probably. Uh, I'm just guessing. Let's see where it, where it goes. And yeah, it's a little noisy when it's moving, but once it's in place, it's it's fairly quiet. See, it's yeah, pointing up. And now it will track. I think that's getting stuck on there. That's my bad. I'm making it jam up because of remotes floating Let's see him try that again all right now it's on track so now it's tracking so this is con this is moving right now with the planet rotation so you're able to lock onto an object and take a long exposure shot um, that's basically it for this thing that's all I really know about it um, I don't know any other things in here, like alignment stuff. Uh, I have no idea what any of this stuff is. Um, if anybody uses these things and could tell me, I would love the information because obviously just starting off in this, I would love to get this perfectly aligned and working a lot better. But I'm I'm not disappointed with it. Uh, the only thing I am kind of disappointed about is, because I've seen a couple of these online, and every single one I've seen has like a just a level, uh, like a bubble level, so you can see if you're actually level to the ground. This is the only one that I haven't seen that has one, or the only one I've seen that doesn't have one. So, um, other than that, uh, that's basically it on like aligning and using this thing, as far as I know. Again, any information is very much welcome. 
but I'll put my before and after pictures in here and I'll tell you a little bit uh, about how I captured them. Alright, so here are the images at the end of the video here I wanted to show you. So this here is the Andromeda Galaxy and this is the first time I ever tried to take pictures of the Andromeda Galaxy and I used a stationary tripod. Uh, I had a very high ISO. Um, my camera can go up to 2500 or 2000, no, 25,000. Okay, there we go. Got the number right. Um, I had it at the highest ISO setting I could get on that camera. And because of the 300 millimeter uh, focal length, you can't do more than like a second of exposure, or you're also going to get some really bad star trailing. Um, so I, that's called the 500 rule or something when you're using stationary tripod. You can only have it, depending on the focal length, a certain amount of time. So they were one second exposures, and I did take. Uh, quite a few pictures here and used them and stacked them in Deep Sky Stacker which is a program used for a lot of astrophotographer uh, uh, it's a free program um, basically anything you want to do in this field of, of a hobby you need some sort of stacking program um, because that's how you get rid of the noise and all that other stuff so this is my first picture I've ever taken of a drama on a stationary tripod now next picture is not showing up. Uh, this was my first attempt with the tracker on Andromeda. Uh, this was five pictures, uh, two minute exposures. So as you can see some of the stars are still a little oblong there and that is because I didn't properly have this aligned. Remember the first time I used this uh, I couldn't see out of the damn scope so I couldn't get it perfectly aligned. But for two minute exposures if I was to try to do it on a stationary trap out of two minutes the whole image would be washed out with lines. So this was my first real attempt. Um, obviously, I would have stacked much more pictures. Um, normally you want hours of, a, of an exposure at the end. Um, I think when I did it the first time with the tra standard tripod, it was, I took like maybe 120 pictures. So at one second exposures, that's 120 seconds, that's two minutes. So. Um, this was five two-minute exposures. Uh, obviously, next time I'm out there and I'm able to get everything perfectly set up and actually sit out there and take much longer exposures um, like this, but a lot more pictures that will give more detail and all that stuff. Next here is the Horsehead and Flame Nebula. This is my first attempt ever doing it on a standard tripod. Um, this was... 25,000 ISO once again and a lot of frames so this was probably over a hundred something pictures and again at one second exposure because uh, focal length was at 300 millimeter um, clearly not much detail here um, it's a lot harder to capture the horse head nebula because it's all in H alpha which is a wavelength of light that normal cameras cannot see but there is still some sort of signal there um, this here is first tracked image um, once again, five pictures at two minute exposures each, um, stacked up, and as you can see, there's a lot more detail, a lot more, um, just overall detail. You can see a lot more of the red, uh, the blacks are contrast better. Uh, I want to focus on this one night and take much longer shots to see if I could get a lot of detail, because I, I want to see the, the horse head nebula, but it's, like I said, H alpha, so... It's harder for the camera to pick up. Um, this here, Orion Nebula. This was my first attempt on a standard tripod. Um, I can't remember what the ISO was on this. I know it was probably like either 6400 or 1280 or 1280, 12,080, 800. I can't speak. Um, again, just not a lot of detail. It's there's oblong shapes so I think I was trying to do like two second exposures so they definitely got some star trailing there and this is my first tracked image um, this was at an ISO of 1600 uh, sorry all the tracked images were at an ISO of 1600 um, as opposed to the high ISOs uh, this was once again two minute exposures five images stacked together and as you can see there's just so much more detail so much more color um, you can see the outer ring of the nebula. There's supposed to be a lot more red um, because there's a lot of H-alpha emission there, but 
Once again, the camera cannot pick it up because I do not have it modified. Um, but that is it for the, those are the first three images I took with the tracker. And I'm just waiting for clear skies to get back out there again and see what else I can do. And obviously I'm researching as much as I can on how to properly get that thing set up. Um, all the things it can do because I don't know much about it. Again, it's only been, what, four or five months that I've been in this hobby. So, um, I'm loving it so far. Uh, definitely got a lot of work to do. My Photoshop skills are very subpar. Um, definitely need to work on those for post-processing. But once everything's said and done, I'm, I'm happy with the results I'm getting so far. Uh, so, any information, I would love to hear anything from you guys, uh, long-time guys. Um, personally, I'm not looking to go too crazy at the moment with, like, dedicated astrophotography cameras, CCDs, and stuff like that. Um, my next camera I'm going to pick up next month is going to be the Nikon D750. Or, uh, that's uh, going to be basically my first actual DSLR that I'll own that I'll be able to use for everything, because I, I do venture out in different photography fields. Um, that's why I don't want to go dedicated yet. Uh, but that will be the one camera I'm going to be getting to use for this as well. Um, I say up a lot. I notice that. So, yeah, that's basically it. Again, any information, I would love to hear what you guys have to uh, say. And uh, have a good night.